Hello once again witchy people. It's the witching hour. Well actually it's not the witching hour but I'm talking about it. So the witching hour, what is it? When is it? What does it mean? And now all of these things are quite difficult to explain because the witching hour will depend on when in time, in time period in history you are, where in history and geologically where you are and what makes it even more confusing uh, for all the Brits among us is does witching hour still count because of British summertime and you know because we change the clocks really nearly an hour forward and an hour back now and then during the year <laughs> so the witching hour first of all I'm going to tell you um, a lot about why people believe in the witching hour or what they think the witching hour is. So, throughout the 1900s and especially even up to the late 1900s, it was considered to be, the witching hour was considered to be a demonic hour. It was associated with demons and the devil. And the witching hour was 3 a.m. Now, it was 3am because the witching, uh, the witching hour isn't actually an hour. It's a time between 2am and 4am and the middle point of that being 3am. And it was a time when witches, and as in historically witches, you know, bad women who cursed people. Uh, that makes me a bad woman. Uh, anyway... <laughs> Witches of the past you know, that weren't too favourably seen. So witches, demons, ghouls, goblins, ghosties uh, came out and terrified you. It was when they were most active. It's when the supernatural happens, uh, according to folklore. So sometimes because of that it was also referred to as a devil's hour or hour of the devil and it was supposed to be the most dangerous time because it was a time during the and i've got to get this right the canonical canonical canon that word canonical hours where there were no prayers now the canonical hours basically it's um divisions of the day with specific prayers attached to them between the hours of two and four there are no prayers attached to the canonical hours and that was why it was considered to be witching hour it was considered to be a dangerous time a time when because there were no prayers uh, when the devil could come out and lure you out and tempt you. So that's kind of part of the reason. There are, however, some biological factors in here. So some New Zealand scientists uh, discovered that the amount of melatonin in your body builds up during the day. And by 3 a.m., it is you have more melatonin in your body it's at its highest and from then it starts going down again and psychologically according to a lot of psychological literature that these New Zealand scientists wrote this would make you more susceptible to those feelings of being watched and uh, therefore having supernatural experiences now also 3 a.m is the time when you are most likely to be in your deepest sleep it's quite funny because it's about 20 past three here now in the morning <laughs> so i should be deep in sleep so anyway yes 3 a.m is um when you are in rem sleep which is the should be the deepest kind of sleep when like your heart rate slows and your body temperature goes down um basically your body kind of dulls a bit so that it can recuperate and restore itself and you, you, know, you need to be fully rested for your body to to restore to get well 
if you are suddenly woken up in this time of being in REM sleep, whether that be through a bump in the night, a car backfiring outside, your husband snoring or your dog farting, <laughs> you can wake up in a panic. And I guess historically, somewhere along the line, those that feeling of panic and fear was associated with witches and demons and scary things and you know hence this witching hour was intensified that the the meaning of the witching hour was intensified <sighs> um strangely enough or not strangely enough um there is a really lovely historian uh, called lucy worsley who does some amazing programs on I don't know what channel it is, but in England, it might be Channel 5, I don't know. And she um, was talking about a theory from another historian whose name was Eric... Roger Eric. Roger Eric, Elric, something like that. Roger El... might be Roger Elric. Who suggested... Um, that pre-industrial revolution uh, because the British winter was you know, up to 14 hours long people would rather than sleep all the way through they would split the night up into two and have two sleeps and you know it would be cold and everything so they would have two long sleeps and so the time that you would be awake would might be between midnight and 4 a.m. And therefore that became the witching hour because it's when people were up and doing things. And I, I kind of didn't agree with this because I thought, no, pre even pre-industrial revolution, you'd have farmers getting up at half four, five o'clock in the morning to tend to their livestock, such as it was during the winter. So I don't think they'd be up for a couple of hours during the night just for the fun of it. They're more likely to sleep all the way through. So I think historically I don't agree with it. But it, it was an interesting point that was made. Anyway, I'm digressing slightly. Witching hour. There was a point in history as well, which I've got to say this, which was quite fun. And I'm not too sure whether it was midnight till 4 a.m., 2 to 3 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m. I don't know what time slot it was, but if women were caught out and about during the witching hour without a good enough excuse, they were considered to be witches and would be accused as such and may even go as far as being executed as a witch because they were up during the witching hour. Um, another small nugget of information here is I, I used to have a friend actually who worked in a hospice and the conversation got around to talking about the witching hour and something that they noted and it, it has been noted several times is that more people passed away at 3am than at any other time so, and she said there wasn't a great deal of difference. Fair enough. You know, you, you might get a difference of maybe one or two extra people a month would more likely pass away at sort of like three, between three and 3.30 a.m. That may have something to do with, obviously, the whole REM sleep thing. I don't know. But she said more people passed away at that time than any other time. And I, I have heard that mentioned quite often it, it's some I don't think it's an urban legend I do think it is you know an actual fact although not a very strong fact it's doesn't it's not like 90 percent of people die at 3 a.m it's a, a not a significant greater number but some more people do die um now the term witching hour as we use it today wasn't coined I don't think until 17. 
it was the late 1700s, 1792, 1793, something like that. Although there was the witching hour before then, it wasn't literally called literarily in literature. <laughs> literarily. It wasn't coined in a book, it wasn't used in a book <laughs> until 1793-ish. Um, but it had been, it, it was obviously something that had been used before then. So there is another train of thought which says that the witching hour is between midnight and 1am. And this is due to a couple of reasons. Um, firstly, because it is the time when the day past meets the day yet to come. So it's that liminal time. That time when it's almost one day, not quite the last day. Um, it's a liminal space, liminal time, um, where the veil between the living and the dead is at its thinnest. This was also known as chime hour, maybe because of the one chime uh, at 1am. And this, the chime hour also referred to witches, specifically witches. And at witching hour or chime hour between midnight and 1am would be the time when they would because the veil was at its thinnest and magic was more powerful, the supernatural was more powerful, they would do their potions and spell work. And also because, you know, between midnight and 1am, it's going to be pretty quiet. You know, the, the late nighters are going to bed and the early risers aren't quite up yet. So it was a time of secrecy as well as a time of supernatural magic. So, witching hour, chime hour, what's it for you? Is it midnight? One, two, three, four? Any time you feel like picking up your wand and doing a little bit of spell casting? I'm not being facetious, I'm not. <laughs> witching hour can be any hour. Or not any hour, depending on what you believe and what you feel. So there you go. Um, some, quite a few, I think, nice interesting facts about witching hour and what it means for some people and where it may or may not have derived some of its meanings and feelings from. So, witching hour. I can blow out my candle and go to bed now. Night night, witchy people.